Munera Ahmed gave up two sons, one 12 months old and the other five, after her husband left. When her family found out, they took her remaining daughter, leaving her alone and healed her own presentation. She has no idea what's happened to her adopted children, despite assurances from the agency that she'd be kept informed. Okay. Can, can I close it? Yes, please close it. Oh. Okay. And now it's, oh, it's here. here. It's, it's here. here. It's here. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And now it's just to find yeah. the light. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so hopeless with technology. Um, so for for the women I interviewed, it's. And this, this seems to be, whenever we encounter the birth mothers, it seems to be the picture, it's the same story we are hearing. Um, they don't forget about uh, the child. Maybe I'll just read one um, mother's uh, cite quote, which is very typical. I don't know what time, I mean, she had her child adopted two and a half years ago, and she was saying to me, I don't know what time I'll ever forget it. I just wondered, will my baby one day ask, Mom, where were you when I started to walk? Mum, where were you when I started teething? And that's quite bad. And quite often, um, it was having their other children that made them strength to go on. But most of them actually would have wanted some information. And I'm now counting the, my numbers differently because people have suspected that... Um, these would be just be very troubled mothers, like a special case. But actually, from the ones I met at random, because I did, it, it's not a self-selected sample. Well, some of it was, but not all of it. It's just um, the basic thing coming forward is that um, they would want some information. I mean, they don't want to lose the contact. This came, came across. And it does, apparently, uh, those who were getting some letters via, from the social workers um, said that it, it, they're, they're very tangible objects. They can retake the letters and photographs and put them away. Um, and as one mother said, um, when I'm lonely, I read the letters and look at the pictures. It helps. It, actually, it keeps me going. And this was very typical of all the other, mother, other mothers. Um, I know he's still there. He's out there and he's fine. And some mothers... Um, were not getting any information, even though they had been told they would, just like the Ethiopian mothers, because it's completely voluntary. It's up to the adoptive parents whether they send any. And some mothers were very angry that have they, why are they, are they not sending me any? Have they forgotten all about me? Um, and the other uh, thing which actually surprised me by, by the strength and the volume with which it came across to me was that that they seem to think that, I mean, we, we adoptive parents tend to think that we get this child forever. Um, but the mothers seem to think that the child will return at some point uh, when, when they are 16 or 18. Um, and this comment is made by um, an illegal immigrant from Zimbabwe. Uh, she said to me, very surprised that I would suggest that when I, when I talked about the child having, having gone, and she said, oh, but that baby, she will come maybe after 18 years. She wants to see me. And another one said um, very strongly that, uh, and I mean, you just wonder how will this illegal immigrant ever, I mean, how does she ever find the child again or the child find her? Um, there will be a time that that child would like to see his mother, and then I will be available. I will be ready at that time. And other mothers saying in that even though, even though the child is not living with me, I mean, that doesn't mean he's not still my child in, in some way. And this comes back to, to the issues of, of the different notions of parenthood. They come, they come up very, very strongly here. Uh, so the ones who had actually met uh, the, the adoptive family um, they were very, in South Africa, they were very carefully monitored, like lasting for 10 or 10, 10 minutes, 5 or 10 minutes. Um, uh, the way they seemed to talk about the adoptive family was um, very, um, 
reverent in a way and very polite and very reticent. They weren't saying much. And of course, here we come to the issue of how much they're actually able to tell to some white woman um, from the other parts of the world doing the interviews. But, but they talked about better parents, good people, and they're nice and how grateful we are. Um, like, like one mother said, I have nothing to give to the child. Maybe those others can give everything, you see. So there's the hierarchy making itself known. Um, and also, uh, many of the birth mothers I interviewed expressed a wish to go there themselves if they could. Um, uh, and one was saying that they even, the adoptive family at the meeting, told me that in their country education is fine. That's why I was so happy because me, I could not go to school. Uh, even now I still want to study. So um, there was this issue. And of course, even, um, even the, the mothers would, would realize that the, the real thing that adoptive parents are interested in is, is the baby. Like one of them said, they, were, they didn't want to talk so much. They just want the baby only. So they're wanting to send their children um, to, to safety. Now those mothers uh, just met the, child, the parents, the adoptive family, like once when they came to fetch the child. But there's one um, who's exceptional in, in a case that um, she has two children adopted to the same family in Europe. And she, she met the family when they first came to fetch uh, the younger son, and now they came back six years later, and the six-year-old to, to adopt another sibling. And now she also met the six-year-old, which makes it a very interesting um, happening. And it wasn't just for five minutes. It went on for, for two and a half, half hours. And actually, uh, the social worker was also present in the interview. Now, I've interviewed the social workers um, separately, uh, but I won't go into that uh, data now, but this just makes the dynamics between the social workers because they have very specific notions of what the birth mothers are like. Um, and in, in this case, it was just the dynamics because Sandy, Sandy I call her Sandy, she was talking about, um, listen, I really wanted to know what became of my child. So any, any day I tell anyone open adoption is best. Um, and they're doing such a great job when they came back. Uh, the, my, my sons will come back someday and I'll be able to tell everyone, look, these are also mine and this is what happened. And it, it's so wonderful. And of course at this point, and, and in the end she also says, oh, I feel as if someone is just looking after them for me. And at this stage the social worker reacts, oh, oh, but um, the, don't you think the boys were meant to be there? It's such a wonderful, lovely family. Um, the boys belong there <laughs> and, because it wasn't going. And also about the meeting, um, it went on for so long that the social workers was worried that how are we going to bring it to an end um, because it just went on. And this is how Sandy describes the meeting of, with her six-year-old. They came back. Uh, it was so wonderful to meet them and see how they were and to see my son again. And they tell him about me and his brother. And then she, the adoptive mother, told him something in their language, and then he responded to her, but the way I made it out to be was he asked, is this my mum? Uh, but she had obviously prepared him and told him I'm his mum, and he looked at me, and he just came and sat on my lap. And it was as if he wasn't away, because he just came and I kissed him, and I lifted him, and I remembered everything. And in the letter they also say that he's asking about me. So he's going to want to come and see me, I know, because we connected um, so well. And then the social workers become worried about how to end this session. Um, and and you, under, you, you see that they don't even have a common language uh, here. And she would also wish to, to, be con to have the contact in email uh, and a few other birth mothers also would have wanted to, but the social workers think it's too much. I mean, email is maybe interrupt, interrupting too much because it's the same time. And, and this social worker, for example, said, oh, that would be totally inappropriate. I mean, then you could ask them, well, what are, what are the boys having for dinner tonight? So there was this feeling of knowledge, but not, uh, not too much um, contact. And now... 
I still have some time, yes. so I, we can have a look at the, the adoptive parents. How, how do they feel about openness? I mean, we've heard about the fears of adoptive parents, um, and certainly um, the fear was there, but more, um, more uh, when the adoption was first, first done. So in the early years, there was a lot of issues about the other mother, the other parents, like parents <clears throat> sorry, uh, told me how they tried to talk to the child about the other mother and the word mother would be stuck in their throat and they wouldn't be able to <coughs> sorry, sorry, tell the child. Um, but there was a big change uh, in how the parents felt as years went on. So four to five years after the, after the adoption, um, a big change. Uh, Parents felt stronger in their adoptive parenthood, um, and they wanted to be able to answer their children's questions. Um, and also, some of them reported of, of the sadness in, in their, well, in this case, it was four 10-year-old girls who burst into tears unexplainably um, and said they were so sad they, weren't, they didn't know anything about the other family. And this, this re, uh, re, result is also um, coming across from other studies. I mean, Rhoda Sherman and Wendy Hawke studied New Ze uh, adoptive parents in New Zealand. And, and when, when the adoption was done, less than 30% of the parents would have wanted any contact. But five years later, uh, over 60, well, 60, about 60% would have wanted to. And this, this change, I've chosen one quote uh, from an ad adoptive mother which just shows the general views of the parents, how, how, they, how there was this change. Um, this mother is explaining, um, well, my child is playing at the conservatory, like giving a piano concert at the music, uh, music school, and I'm crying and laughing because she had once again composed something and was playing it. She's so talented. I cried and laughed because it sounded so great, and her father was crying next to me. And at the same time, I'm thinking, I so hope the birth mother could know that it's her daughter up there, so that one could share these special moments, what the mother is missing, she means. And the older I get, um, the more I think that my position will remain and the child will not get confused or mad, even if there, there were the two of us. Uh, so what about parents who actually met the birth mother? Um, these were mainly in, the meetings happened in South Africa, but um, some of them in other countries too. Um, certainly the, the, the idea of, the, the thought of meeting the birth mother activated fears of losing the child. Uh, what if she wants him back? Um, and also it was quite hard seeing um, the sorrow of the birth parents. And in two cases, also the birth father was present. Um, and it's, it was especially hard seeing these men. I mean, one, one adoptive mother says, it's okay if, the, if the, us women would cry, but then the father burst into tears and, and he didn't have anything to wipe his face, so he took his cap and uh, wiped his eyes. Um, and also they report how grateful Again, we come across this word grateful. The birth parents were to see that one mother says, well, these adoptive parents obviously are not crazy. They're going to look after. They are normal people. They're going to look after the child. Um, and also they, they felt that it's their duty so they can tell the, meet the parents and tell the child later. But what's interesting is that most of these uh, parents did not continue the contact. Um, they, it seemed to be fine to meet the mother once, but then any continuing, ongoing contact would again activate the fear of, of losing the child. And, and just like one mother said, uh, you can't be a mother to someone just for a while and then not. So uh, let's quickly look at the three families who were in contact, in ongoing contact with altogether four families two in birth families, two in some African countries, and one in, Latin, in a Latin American country. Um, in the others, uh, the children were still quite, quite young, but in, in one of them, uh, the adoptive